The study of whether electric vehicles are feasible for Singapore roads is set to move into its second phase. And the Land Transport Authority says this could involve car sharing and also commercial fleets. The LTA says that data collected from the initial two-and-a-half-year testbed period, which ended in December last year, could be used to plan further trials. But some stakeholders questioned if the government is being overcautious in driving the scheme. Monica Kadwani has a look at what it means to have clean technology on Singapore roads. About four times a week, business owner Moi Saha walks from his office to where his rented electric car is parked. He unlocks the car with a chip pasted on his driver's license, keys in his pin for added security, turns the car on and drives home. He is one of 400 customers of electric vehicle sharing company Smooth. I also do have another car, but uh, you know, uh, it's easy for me to find parking with a smaller car. So uh, that's one of the big draws. Electric vehicles have gained traction in the last decade or so. They're made from recyclable materials and have zero tailpipe emissions, which helps the environment. Experts also say electric cars could cost about a third to a quarter of a normal vehicle in running costs. For example, to run an electric car, it costs about $5 per 100 kilometers in electricity. To run a comparable-sized normal car, it could cost about $20 per 100 kilometers in petrol. Now, another benefit is that electric cars are quiet, and offer a smoother ride. Range anxiety or the fear that electric cars will not have enough charge to reach their destination has been a concern for users in other countries. But this is less of a challenge in a small country like Singapore. The LTA says the first phase of the testbed involved 53 organisations, including companies, government agencies and institutions of higher learning. And 89 electric cars have been used on the roads. The average daily driving distance for normal cars in Singapore is 55 kilometres. Preliminary findings from the testbed show that the average daily drive for electric vehicles is 41 kilometres. On a full charge, cars under the testbed could reach a maximum daily distance of 115 kilometres. But there are other concerns too. Some participants say there are too few charging stations. But Bosch Singapore, which rolls out the infrastructure here, says there are currently 75 charging stations with 118 charging spots around the country. Another concern has been the hefty price tag for an electric car. Testbed participants can purchase cars under the government's Transport Technology Innovation Development Scheme. This means they do not have to pay for costs such as the Certificate of Entitlement, Road Tax and Registration Fees. But the trial is not open to the public, and buying an electric vehicle without tax rebates or incentives could cost about $200,000 after COE. The extra price is essentially the battery. So one of the incentives what one could think about is to exclude the battery from the taxation scheme because that's driving a lot of the cost and through the taxation scheme actually the battery becomes even more expensive over here. If the cost of privately owning an electric car remains prohibitive, there could be other solutions. Smooth is currently the only electric car sharing player in the Singapore market. But this could change in phase two of LTA's trial if more of such companies are roped in. Electric cars could also be used in micro-communities around Singapore, where distances are too far to walk but too short to drive. The National University of Singapore has been collaborating with Toyota Tusho, the trading arm of the Toyota Group, to test micro-electric vehicles around its campus.
Now, these micro cars are classified as four wheel motorcycles and seat one. And because they use acid based rather than lithium based batteries, which you'd see in an electric vehicle, there is no allowance for luxuries like air conditioning, which uses a lot of power. Now, researchers say current results show that the average trip on these vehicles is about two kilometers, which they say makes perfect environmental sense. For me, we, before the micro EV, I used to go for meetings at other places within the uh, university in my car, which is a seven-seater. So you can imagine a single person driving a single-seater for the short trip, which is fairly inefficient. Another option is electric taxis. Currently, there are some 28,000 normal taxis plying the roads. Data shows that in two shifts, each taxi could travel about 520 kilometers a day. Having electric taxis could significantly reduce carbon emissions, but will they be able to overcome charging problems for such long distances? Nanyang Technological University researchers have been working with the Technical University Munich to develop an electric taxi prototype for Singapore. The prototype can be fully charged in 15 minutes and travel distances of more than 200 kilometers per charge. But is Singapore able to support the power requirements if electric cars are more common on the road? Experts say the power currently generated in Singapore could be enough even if all cars turn electric. Power stations are actually running uh, on, a, on a cyclical basis. So it, it is a peak demand during the day, especially morning and evenings, and a very low demand at night. So EVs should capitalize on the low demand at night to charge their, the vehicles, to charge the batteries. And this is very uh, good for power stations because they, are, they, operated, uh, they are optimized to operate on a steady load, not on the sort of fluctuating loads. Authorities say the test bed has shown favorable results for electric cars in Singapore in the future, but not immediately or even in the next three years. And some stakeholders are concerned Singapore could be moving too slow. I'm sure the government has to be a lot more uh, judicious in its use of public funds, so maybe that's why it's taking a more cautious and conservative stand towards um, this whole test bed. And, um, but obviously the risk there would be obviously we could fall uh, behind other countries in terms of the development of, a electric, of the electric vehicle industry in Singapore. But the government says it's looking for balance. If the price of electric vehicles is still you know, at, a, at a level that uh, vehicle owners find uh, not to be very economical, not worth them making that choice, then no amount of effort that you put in, uh, in the uh, infrastructural areas is going to change that fact. So these things have to move in tandem. You, too early, it falls flat. Uh, too late, then you don't catch the, the, you know, the opportunity as well. For now, electric vehicles are generating some buzz on Singapore roads, but it remains to be seen if they will become a key mode of transport for the future.